Hello everyone, welcome to week nine. This week we're going to be discussing the MRI abdomen. Okay, so um, very similar to the brain, the lumbar spine, I would probably put the abdomen uh, in terms of, you know, the frequency in which you're going to be getting a MRI abdomen is going to be pretty frequent. So depending on where you work. So if you're in a hospital setting, cancer center, uh, something along those lines and not in a you know, specialized hospital that's focusing on, you know, uh, orthopedics or anything like that, or orthopedic office, you're likely going to be, uh, you know, engaging in some MRI abdomen. So definitely a very important topic this week. Um, so definitely uh, ensure that we are following along and uh, understanding what I'm going to go through. Okay, so here we go. So section one uh, and section one is going to focus on the liver the pancreas, the kidneys, and the adrenals. Uh, we're also going to be discussing the MRCP, which is a uh, exam that focuses on the biliary tract um, of the you know uh, liver to the pancreas to the duodenum. Okay, so we're going to be discussing all of them in detail. So just to kind of start a abdominal overview, the abdomen is a region of the body that starts at the diaphragm. So as we mentioned, you know, in the prior weeks, the diaphragm is sort of the uh, distinct separator between the thorax, chest region and the abdominal region. OK, uh, and that extends as far down or inferior to the pelvic brim, which is that iliac crest area. OK, that's about L5S1. Okay, there's no clear defined separation between the abdomen and the pelvis region compared to the chest and the abdominal region. So um, the abdominal pelvic area tend to be joined together. So depending on every patient, and again, I always say, you know, no patient is created equally. Um, you know, you might have, you know, a patient that has a lower extending, um, you know, small intestines, lower extending kidneys, you know, maybe they have large kidneys, polycystic kidney problems, where there's large kidneys where you got to ensure that you cover more inferiorly because you definitely don't want to clip the bottom of the kidneys. OK, so very important not to clip the kidneys. OK, so wherever the kidneys end is essentially where you're going to end your slices for your MRI abdomen study. Okay, the abdomen, uh, the abdominal cavity contains many organs and, you know, we're going to go over each one, but they consist of the liver, the gallbladder, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, and then the small and large intestines. Okay, so we're going to kind of, you know, go through each one individually, see what they look like on MRI. There is also a presence of vascular structures as well, such as the abdominal aorta, which comes off of the heart. Remember, um, ascending aorta. Um, down to the descending aorta, or, and that extends all the way down into the pel into the abdomen, abdomen, and then sort of the um, superior aspect of the pelvis. So remember, you know that that's going to make its way down. So we're going to be covering that all the way, basically until the pelvis, until it branches off into the common iliac arteries. Okay, the inferior vena cava is what brings deoxygenated blood, right? So the vena cava is a vein, okay, and that's going to bring deoxygenated blood back to the heart. And that is basically the opposite direction of the abdominal aorta. So abdominal aorta brings blood down or inferior to the lower half. And then the inferior vena cava brings it more superior uh, back to the heart. Okay. And the pathway that the inferior vena cava takes, it actually passes through the liver and then into the right atrium. Um, another term that the inferior vena cava will be termed as is the IVC. Okay, so you might have, you know, you know, you're going to hear that along the lines and I, you know, rule out a IVC, um, you know, embolism. Okay, you might hear of an IVC filter, you know, which is a common MRI safety concern. Okay, also what we're going to be discussing is the hepatic portal vein. Okay, that's the vein that essentially feeds the liver. Okay, and then in addition to that, the arterial and venous branches of the corresponding organs that were just named above. All right, so let's jump right in. I'm going to kind of go through uh, axial and coronal abdomens first. But when scanning an MRI abdomen, 75% of this exam will focus on the axial, aka the transverse sequence, uh, to allow cross section of the of the abdomen. Okay, um, and the reason for that is because abdominal organs are shaped in in the long axis from superior to inferior. So you're going to see 
you know, just kind of going back to the prior slide, a lot of these organs are going to be going this way. Okay, so longitudinal compared to horizontal. So that means to get a good cross section, majority are going to be axial images. Coronal imaging is also complete to assess the positioning of the organs within the abdominal cavity. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a slide. Our next slide is going to focus on like, yeah, there's a mass, but you know, and you're seeing it on axial, but where is it actually located, you know, within the liver or within the kidney uh, on the coronal plane? So it kind of confirms and allows us to kind of use that battleship mentality of, you know, it's here and then from the left to right side, it's, it's, it's there. So we're able to localize it a little bit better. Sagittal imaging provides minimal information. So, you know, rarely are you going to be using a, um, a sagittal view here. You're going to, it's going to be included in your localizer, but you're never really going to run a sagittal abdomen sequence. Okay. MRI abdomen studies provide great detail when evaluating masses, okay, by measuring the tissue characteristics. So you're going to always measure fat versus water. So you're going to say, you know, I'm doing an abdomen study and I see a mass there you know, what are we, you know, it's going to look a little bit different, you know, if it's a mass compared to a cyst, okay? Um, so if you have someone who has a liver mass that's, you know, that's solid, it could be benign or malignant, doesn't matter, it's going to be a solid mass and it'll have a lower density. But it, let's just say you have some cysts on your kidneys, those are full of, full of fluid, so they're going to be a little bit hyper intensity or brighter. Okay, the use of gadolinium contrast is used to evaluate the activity and the function of the masses, the tumors, and the other types of pathology. So, as we mentioned prior, you know, that contrast kind of goes in and it allows us to see what that pathology or what that concern is actually doing. So, you know, let's just say it's a, it's a cyst, you're likely not even going to use contrast because you're able to identify just by plain tissue characteristics that it's that it's something full of fluid rather than a solid mass but let's just say it's a solid mass now we got to determine if it's benign or malignant it does it have vascularity to it uh, and that's where you know contrast is going to come in and it's going to be able to di uh, differentiate between benign and malignancies all right, so let's take a look at coronal MRI uh, abdomen. So the coronal MRI abdomen is used to assess positioning like we just mentioned. The coronal MRI abdomen allows a radiologist to evaluate and confirm the localization of the mass. Okay, so you're gonna likely see something on an axial. So if we look at the image down on the right, uh, bottom right, you're, you're gonna see like a little uh, mass here, okay? And likely this was picked up on ultrasound, but uh, this little mass here, Okay, it allows us to say, okay, we see the mass, but what does it look like on a coronal? And notice, you know, if you only were dealing with the axial, you might not actually understand, you know, you may be able to figure it out like, okay, we're just at the, at the poles of the, of the left kidney here. Um, it's high, but where is it exactly, okay, from left to right? So we can see here on the image right above that, you know, you can clearly see that mass right there, and it's actually pretty high. So, um, you know, you're able to kind of, verify check but verify you know with the coronal image okay the major benefit of coronal mri abdomen sequences allows visualization of the major vessels and ducts within the liver pancreas and then connecting and how they connect or you know why they connect to the not really why but how they connect to the digestive system so we're able to see the portal vein the hepatic portal vein the ivc the renal arteries the splenic arteries and the mesenteric arteries as well in an MRI abdomen with contrast, the coronal will also be included in those post-contrast sequences in addition to the axial. So what you're gonna do is, like we mentioned in the prior um, lectures, you're gonna do a pre-contrast that allows you to get a baseline of what that image looks like before contrast. And then you're gonna inject the contrast, wait a certain delay time, and then you're gonna run another sequence with the contrast present within the abdomen. Okay, and that's gonna allow us to see what that suspected, let's just say, mass uh, will do with that contrast. So again, remember, if it absorbs it, that means there's vascularity to it. That means that there's blood going to that mass. But if, it's, if there is no vascularity or no blood going to that mass, it'll just essentially surround the uh, mass and it won't infiltrate it, okay? 
So um, just kind of breaking up upper abdomen and then lower abdomen. Again, it's the abdomen in general, but I'm really just to, to simplify this a little bit better for everybody, uh, I wanna just kind of have a upper abdomen and then a lower abdomen. So consisted inside of the upper abdomen, we're gonna have the liver, the gallbladder, the common bile duct, the pancreas, and the spleen. So those are gonna be the focus for the upper abdomen first part of this lecture. Okay, just, I know that you may have already learned this in anatomy, but for those that have not taken that uh, course yet, let's kind of go over some functions of the liver. Okay, and all the other organs. So the, the liver regulates chemical levels within the blood, including blood and waste coming from the stomach and the intestines. Okay, it produces something called bile, okay, which we're gonna be discussing in just a second. It metabolizes and breaks down nutrients for easier processing within the body. It breaks down medications, drugs, and alcohol into, into something easier for the, for the body to allow it to absorb a little bit better. Okay, so let's just say you're going to go on a new drug. Um, a lot of the physicians, as sort of a prerequisite, will run some liver enzyme tests that will allow us to, you know, essentially see what your baseline liver function is. And then, you know, after your medication, they might run a liver function maybe three or four weeks after that to see what that medication is doing. Okay, especially for folks with pre existing conditions. Okay, the gallbladder is where that bile is stored, okay? The bile is produced in the liver and is stored in the gallbladder. Remember that, write that down, circle this. Okay, the common bile duct, the connection, uh, the, it's, it's basically merged from the cystic duct, which is coming from the gallbladder, and the hepatic duct coming from the liver. And that's go, then they're both gonna conjoin and they're gonna go and you know, attach right to the duodenum. We're going to show you a nice illustration in a moment. This system in total, in general, is called a biliary system, okay? The pancreas. The pancreas produces pancreatic juices, for a lack of a better term, but they are referred to as enzymes, okay? This is to aid the digestive system. It helps break down um, certain foods and, and, and uh, so on and so forth. The pancreatic duct is found within the pancreas and kind of runs along the long axis of the pancreas. And this merges with the common bile duct at the duodenum. Okay, this is also termed uh, the romance of the abdomen. This is one thing I remember from radiography school that I wanted to bring here, but uh, I'll show you what we mean by romance of the abdomen. Okay, it's kind of where everything is kind of joined together um, and they're basically pushing up on each other. The spleen uh, filters blood to remove any waste and creates white blood cells to help prevent infections. Okay, so again, these are just a quick overview on organs and then what their functions are. So let's jump into some illustrations. So this is a nice illustration. I added a couple others as well, but we can see here we have the liver. Okay, this would be the right side. This would be the left side. The liver is very much is pretty much takes up the entire right side. Uh, and the liver is so large that it actually pushes the right kidney inferiorly. Okay, it's a very, very large organ. Okay, uh, so coming from that liver, um, right underneath it, there's something called the gallbladder, okay, that's allocated in green. Okay, and that um, liver, okay, is what produces that bile, and that bile goes to the gallbladder from the hepatic duct. Okay, and it gets stored within the gallbladder. Okay. The gallbladder, let's just say you eat something fatty like ice cream or have coffee with milk or whatever it may be, uh, your gallbladder is actually a muscular organ that actually squeezes out that bile and it pushes it through the cystic duct, which is right here, and it conjoins into the common bile duct and you can see it extends right through, through the pancreas and into the duodenum, okay? The duodenum is actually where everything sort of um, that you're eating and all the nutrients are going to flow through and they go right into the duodenum. Okay, that's where the pancreatic juices or the enzymes are going to flow into and also where the bile is going to come as well. So together, those actually break down food quite a bit. Okay, so uh, we can see here we have the pancreatic head, you have the pancreatic tail. Okay, and within we have something called the pancreatic duct. Okay. Uh, just kind of going through uh, the entrance points, okay? There's one that's larger than the other. We have a major duodenal papilla, and then we have a minor duodenal, uh, duodenal papilla. 
okay, posterior to all of these organs will run your inferior vena cava, okay, which passes through the liver. And then you have your abdominal aorta, which brings deoxygenated blood down, okay, inferiorly to the lower half of the body. Okay, uh, let's not forget the biggest part here is the stomach. Okay, this is where we, our food comes down. This piece right here would be the esophagus entering into the stomach. Okay, so the food passes through, comes down here, and it meets up with the, um, the bile and the pancreatic juices, aka the enzymes. Okay, another really good picture that I found, uh, this actually includes the spleen, okay, and the splenic artery coming off of it. Again, just kind of taking away that liver for a second, which is very large and robust. Let's focus on exactly what the cystic duct looks like. So again, the gallbladder is here. Okay, the right and left hepatic ducts, okay, that comes off of the liver. Okay, so that'll work posteriorly to the front uh, part of that lobe of the liver. Okay, and they kind of come through and they come up in here and they sit and the bile sits right in here in the gallbladder. And again, once you eat that fatty food, uh, it'll squirt out some bile and it'll come, come through the cystic duct and down through the common bile duct, okay? So remember, this is the pancreas here. Okay, the pancreas runs and just sits right here along the duodenum. It's a perfect little junction. And again, they call this the romance of the abdomen because uh, they like to kind of use that term of them being very close together, almost laying together, okay? So one thing that we're going to talk about in just a moment is the pancreas kind of runs uh, almost at an angle from, uh, you know, so it's a very retroponic peritoneal organ. So it sits further in the back of the abdomen, but it almost runs from front to back. So almost on an angle, depending on the body habit. So I have never seen the same um, pancreas sitting in the same line. Uh, it's to be honest, it's, I've never seen it. Uh, compared to like the liver or the kidneys, you'll see the kidneys just kind of in the same spot every single time, same for the liver. The pancreas, on the other hand, is kind of tough to find, and it's always kind of looking different depending on every case. Okay, uh, the spleen here is the outside portion, and as we mentioned, it's uh, the housing area for creating, um, you know, a, a, a sort of a filtration system and creating, you know, white blood cells. All right, let's start introducing some MRI images. So again, I have a very large, you know, uh, uh, there will be a very large MRI, um, but this is sort of coned down. I wanted to clip off pieces so they correlate nicely with the illustrations. So we can see here, we'll just start sort of counter, uh, we'll start clockwise. Stomach here, we can see the stomach. Okay, it's full of probably gadolinium. It's probably something that they had them drink to fill the stomach. So you can see the nice folds in the stomach. Okay. The pancreatic head, okay, this right here is the pancreas. It looks like a little, it looks almost symmetrical, but remember that, and we're gonna discuss in a little bit, that it's actually on an angle, so we're only clipping the front of it, okay? I'll explain that in just a moment. The gallbladder, which is spelt wrong, apologies. Um, this is going to be sitting right here, just inferior to the liver, okay? And that's the bile that's just sitting there, okay? Ready to be excreted. The liver here, okay, again, you can't miss that. And then the common bile duct is found right here. This is actually a fantastic image. So cystic duct right here, common, buct, uh, common duct right down here, and then the hepatic duct right, uh, I'm sorry, hepatic duct left, hepatic duct right. All right, let's introduce the spleen again. Um, so again, it's more to the left side, but it is within that upper uh, abdominal region. So we can see here, uh, spleen from an MRI, spleen from the illustration that I showed earlier. So again, spleen, splenic vein, splenic artery. Okay, so that this splenic artery would be found right here. Okay, and then of course, the diaphragm, which is uh, just, you know, that, that, that divider between the thorax slash lung region and the uh, abdominal region. All right, let's chat about the portal vein and inferior vena cava. This is probably gonna be uh, one of the tougher parts of the um, lecture, but let's give it a shot. So uh, we'll start with the illustration to the right just because it's easier. But we can see here, here's the liver, okay? And notice that when the, um, the portal vein is the large vein that comes through into the liver and then essentially connects into the inferior vena cava, okay, through the hepatic veins, okay? And then goes right into the heart. So uh, we can see here the heart on, so the image to the left shows the heart right here. 
So it's very, very close to the liver, okay? So when uh, that, that deoxygenated blood comes back into the liver, okay, for one last round, it then extends into the inferior vena cava and then right into the heart, okay? And it's brought from the liver to the inferior vena cava via the hepatic veins, okay? So we can also see here, um, you don't necessarily have to know this, but uh, the pancreatotic splenic uh, veins, okay, this is all the deoxygenated blood, okay, if you were to put, you know, something here, it would be the pancreas, okay, um, you know, you got the splenic vein that's kind of taking it all out and bringing it to the portal vein and into the liver, and then thus into the IVC, into the heart to get repumped back out. Okay, the superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, you don't necessarily have to know that, uh, but we can definitely see that the, um, you know, the pathway that it takes is portal vein, liver, hepatic veins, IVC, heart. Okay, image to the left, we can see IVC clearly. Um, I was able to get a nice, you know, sort of shot here. Uh, portal vein, you can see coming in, liver, and then you can see the splenic vein coming over from the left. Uh, towards that portal vein. All right, so let's introduce the MRI, C, uh, the MRI MRCP study. So the MRI CP study uh, is an MRI sequence in which a single shot image uh, that is one thick 3D slab, okay? So it's something called a, a single shot, quote unquote single shot MRI sequence. And you're able to make that one slab where there's no spacing in between um, and thin slices. So we're able to get a nice clear picture of the entire biliary tract. So just kind of using the illustration that we went through, cystic duct, uh, paddock duct, common bile, okay, a pancreatic duct, okay, right into the duodenum. So we can see duodenum, we can see the pancreatic duct coming from the left all the way through and conjoining with the common bile duct here, okay, and then enters into the duodenum, okay. Gallbladder here, cystic duct connecting to the gallbladder, okay, and then the hepatic duct kind of extending superiorly into the liver, uh, thus showing all the um, arteries and, 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 and flow within the liver. Okay, very, very tough study. Um, you know, once you master the MRI CP, you can officially call yourself a senior tech. That'll be the point. Let's take a look at the MRI pancreas. So again, I was mentioning the pancreas is kind of like an odd organ in terms of where it sits. Okay, the pancreas is known to be difficult um, to visualize on all modalities, okay, including CT and sonography. So due to this inherent positioning um, within the abdominal cavity, it's kind of tough to see. The pancreas is situated retroperitoneal, like I mentioned. The pancreatic tail is located posterior to the left side Okay, so we can see here left side, right side. Um, so it kind of, you know, the tail sits almost near like the inferior aspect of the spleen and kind of runs around the aorta and the IVC and kind of extends down and, and connects with the duodenum. Okay, so you can see it runs anteriorly uh, to, and to and around the abdominal aorta and then it kind of, you know, abuts with the, um, uh, the, with the duodenum kind of right there in the romance of the abdomen. So I kind of put some lines in here to show like the shape of this specific uh, uh, pancreas. So when you're thinking about doing like a coronal images, you know, from front to back, you know, that's why we're kind of stuck with an image like this because it's just not in plane with the slices, okay? So this slice is probably, you know, this slice here was probably done probably somewhere around here, okay? Because this is the head and this is the head of the pancreas as well. So um, again, the pancreas, you're never really gonna get it in plane. Um, very, very difficult and likely unlike, very unlikely to get it. So we can see here, I took this image or the sequence and I kind of you know, took separate slices to show, you know, these are two separate slices. This is very um, you know, retroperitoneal and you can see the tail of the uh, pancreas just kind of sitting all the way back here. And then I scrolled forward, and we're going to do a, uh, a full video on this. We'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the, the pancreatic head is really anterior. So there's like a, almost like a six to seven slice difference between these two slices. Just goes to show you how much of an angle that, that, that pancreas kind of runs. Okay, so note that the shape of the pancreas varies, but different 
uh, but but normally is positioned in accordance to the available space within the abdomen. So again, it kind of moves. It also sort of moves within the abdomen as well. All right, so let's start talking about some lower abdominal organs and those functions. So the kidneys, the kidneys filtrate waste excre uh, excretion, um, specifically urea, which is debris from the proteins that have been broken down, and the uric acid, which is the breakdown of acids within the body. So it really kind of gets rid of those, um, you know, extra uh, or, 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 you know, quote unquote garbage of the, of the body, and it kind of filtrates that out. It reabsorbs, so the kidneys also reabsorb key nutrients from the blood and routes these nutrients to the area of, or the organ that is of need, okay? Nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, sugars, and water are common nutrients that the kidney reabsorbs into the body, okay? It also maintains pH throughout the body. The pH is the balance between acid and water within the body, okay? So if you ever had a hot day and you know you're not drinking water, um, or, you know, you kind of need like a Gatorade of some sort with some electrolytes. That's that whole pH system being out of whack. Okay, it also regulates blood pressure. The adrenal glands produce hormones that assist in metabolism regulation and act as a responder to stress and other essential functions within the body. Okay, we're going to show you those in a second. The ureters act as a pathway, a, a pathway for urine to pass from the kidneys to the bladder. Okay, again, the bladder is sort of a... Um, a, a, a basin for for the for the uh, urine that the kidneys have created okay the small intestines break down food from the stomach and then absorb those nutrients and then large intestines absorb any water or key salts remaining from that digestion um, as the sort of food passes through the large intestines so in theory when you think about it when you're eating it's going to pass through the small intestines first where it's going to be broken down and then anything that's you know, essentially not absorbed is going to pass through into the large intestines and the large intestines sort of pick up anything remaining. Okay. And if it's not, you know, something that the body needs, it kind of passes it through, uh, to the, to the rectum. Okay. So let's take a look at the kidneys. The kidneys, uh, within an MRI abdomen exam are better, are, are easier and, you know, to visualize compared to the pancreas or the adrenal glands. MRI of the kidneys provides comprehensive analysis in which you can evaluate the renal arteries and veins, essentially. Uh, in addition to that, you can see the internal components, and then you can see the ureters coming out as well. So the image above, uh, coronal view, the image below is a axial view. Um, I took some time to put a slide together, which is the next slide, that really kind of shows some labeling, better labeling. So we'll focus on top first, which is the coronal view. So from clockwise, we're going to start with the spleen. You can see here up on the left top, upper left corner. Um, and I'm sorry, this is going to be left kidney. And this is going to be right kidney. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so left kidney, uh, you're going to have your renal artery, your right kidney, and then your liver. Okay. Uh, the renal artery, you can see coming out, it's quite robust, very thick. Um, a lot of blood that passes through there. Okay, so renal artery, and then just posterior to that, you can see a little thinner, um, you know, tubular uh, structure that comes out, which is the uterer, okay? And notice how small that is, so in case you, um, you know, do develop a kidney stone, imagine a kidney stone of five centimeters passing through that, you know, not, not a great feeling, okay? Uh, to the left side, abdominal aorta, dead center, okay? And then we have contrast within the kidney, so, um, you know, this is a, a post-contrast um, sequence here. Uh, I chose it because it just shows a lot more contrast and uh, allows us to teach a little bit better and see a little bit better. But you can see very bright within the kidneys. This would be probably just as dark as almost this liver content here. Okay, you can also see there's some contrast in the um, veins and arteries going into the muscle musculature as well. Okay, the last but not least, the MRI adrenals. On the MRI, adrenal glands are difficult to locate as they are very small in reference to the larger field of views that we're normally doing with MRI. So normally with an MRI, you're doing 26 field of view. Um, it's too large to really see those small, small adrenal glands. So um, I actually kind of you know, ran through this MRI and I was like, wow, let me, I'm really having trouble finding this adrenal gland number one, but I finally found it. Uh, the adrenal gland sits atop the kidney's superior pole and they are small but very complex in terms of function. So a lot of chemicals come out of this component 
Uh, we can see here just sort of this adrenal gland sitting right on top, um, kind of abutting the, uh, the liver. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed this lecture. Um, definitely, uh, you know, read over these functions. Um, you know, definitely, as usual, there will be some image assessment questions on the quizzes, so make sure you know your anatomy, and um, good luck studying.